Welcome back, everyone, to Natalie is the Don. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we have one last replay for today. It's going to be Anir versus Gaia on Aurelian. Anir and Gaia both going for the Hovercraft Factory. I am seriously considering that this map might just be a better map for Hovercraft, since people just want to go Hovercraft all the time. I've seen some ship play. I've seen a bit more Hovercraft play. I've seen, honestly, better Hovercraft play than ship play on this map, and I think a lot of it is because of the fact that Hovercraft is just better known. I don't think it's the map. I did just say maybe it's a Hovercraft map. But upon further reflection, I think it might just be that people play Hovercraft more. Like, Hovercraft is viable on more maps, especially in the more recent additions to the map pool. Like, Hovercraft's a great factory for Thornford as well. So I'm guessing people are just more used to Hovercraft, want to play Hovercraft, and this map works. Whereas for ships, those are less familiar, and this isn't a map that you kind of have to play ships on in the way that Shimmershore was a map you kind of had to play ships on. So I'm guessing that's just the case. Also, with Hovercrafts, you can go along here, and that's really cool. We actually saw that in a match that I casted a few weeks ago, where that was relevant. <laughs> I mean, FC, I don't... Okay, FC is asking in the chat if I wanted to see a big, long, boring game that was ship versus ship for a while. And I mean, I... I have. So, no? I, I mean, I want to see the evolution of ship combat. It's just that right now, it doesn't seem to have evolved much. Okay, Dimefrine asking why I think it's better for ships. I mean... I'm not really sure. I'm kind of more guessing at the fact that people are using Hovercraft more. The only, like, this section here does favor Hovercraft somewhat. It does provide Hovercraft a really sneaky path to get through. But otherwise, I don't really see any particular reason. The only thing I can think of is maybe that there's not a whole lot of room for submarines to act because this shallow section... But the shallow section is fine. Submarines can go through it no problem. So I'm not entirely sure. Like, I would expect, I would personally expect ships to be used more, honestly. I just figured that Shimmer Shore is the kind of map where you almost have to use, it almost felt like you had to use ships, or people seem to think you had to use ships. I'm not sure that you did, it's just that was the impression, everyone just used ships all the time. Whereas on Aurelian, people tend, I've found higher level players seem to be using Hovercraft a lot. But again, I think that might just be a matter of comfort. I think it might just be a matter of people used to, how, oops, used to how Hover works used to what you can do with it, used to how much, how how its units, how its counters work, how all that stuff works, whereas ships, not so much. I mean, you often see players play ships and then it'll be like, they forget that Mistrals exist. Or they forget that maybe they should have been going for Seawolves. Or like, they forget how effective Hunters can be. Like, there's a lot of things where it just seems like there's an unfamiliarity with ships. And I was kind of hoping Aurelian would fix that, because Shimmer Shore was an okay map, but kind of small. And Aurelian being a much larger map, like Dimefron is saying here, you'd think ships would be better because of the speed, and indeed I would, but no one's using them. Or not as often. I often find hovercraft games. I shouldn't say no one's using them. I haven't seen enough Aurelian games to know one way or the other. It just doesn't seem as popular. But again, I I'm just going to chalk that up to comfort for now. Because I do agree with you, Dying Friend. I think that this is a map that does have a lot to go for for C. Like, other than the southwest section that only hovercrafts can use, Sea or ships have free reign in the entire area. And it's not an issue. Anyway, at this point, daggers come in. First shot fired. Guy up getting rid of a scalpel with very little damage. Actually, no damage on their end. Second scalpel coming in. Should be able to take care of a dagger or two. But more importantly, that's the rest of Anir's forces coming in to actually help out. Guy up, however, I'm not sure what they're going to be going for right now. Because they are going to be primarily going for just on-surface stuff. Like, the commander is basically sort of safe. The daggers can hit the commander... Commander does have a Lotus coming up to try to deal with that, though, so it will be a bit of a problem. I mean, there are enough daggers to get rid of the Lotus. If it weren't for that, that most of them are heavily damaged and they're getting picked off one by one without ever actually getting anything hit. Three daggers dead for nothing. Mace coming in on top of that for Gaiup. So Gaiup continuing to build up Mace is not really building up all that much else. I'm not really sure what to expect off that because Gaiup is going to be going in with a very slow army against an army that's pretty much tailored to defeat Maces. I mean, that's what scalpels are for. I would kind of expect to see a few more daggers come in. Maybe a claymore. I know it sounds weird because claymores are largely against submarines, but they work against surface stuff very well. Like, they're good riots. They're expensive and risky and mostly hit underground. Or, sorry, underwater. But I'm fairly certain they can target surface units. I mean, that's one of the reasons why claymores are so often used by hovercrafts against ships. 
Like, it is the common thing of halberd claymore because they just push through. The ships can't really damage the halberds, and the claymores just rush in with the depth charges and kill everything. Same time, though, there is a nice defensive option here for the maces, but that's it. The maces are done. There's not a whole lot else to go for here. It just seems like guy up trying to find something, like desperately trying to find some way of actually dealing meaningful damage here and struggling, like truly struggling to find some way of actually putting any real breaks on Anir's production, but not really happening. Thankfully for them, they do get rid of a quill. So Anir is down one worker, but beyond that, there isn't really a whole lot that's changed. I mean, right now, Gaiop, they're even on economy. They're kind of, they're expanding reasonably quickly. I'm kind of surprised Anir hasn't really expanded over the northwest side of the map quite yet. But still, it's just a matter of what what can really happen here. If Gaiop's building up a bunch of units that are being countered by scalpels, they are building up scalpels themselves, though. So, a bit more room there. I just am a bit surprised we aren't seeing any halberds yet. I have to really rush in and take out the scalpels directly or distract the scalpels the same way we saw the scythes distract the fencers in the last game. Or the Fairyland game, the first game today. Okay, if we get into are pointing out in chat that they're thinking ships win versus hovers because of Mistral and Corsair. And I can totally see that. I just have yet to see a player actually remember that Mistral is a, fa is a unit in the ship factory. Most of the time I see people play ships, or I've seen people play ships recently, Mistrals have gone woefully unused. But yeah, I can totally see that, because I mean, you have the skirmisher option that's fairly strong, allows for strong retreat so you can get away from daggers and such while you're attacking. And then the Corsairs just wipe out the daggers if the daggers come close. So no, that makes sense. I can totally see that. I still think Halberd Claymore would have something to say to that, just because the Halberds will be able to get through the Mistral's fire and not really take much damage, and the Claymores can still rush in and blow everything up. But, yeah, I can totally see that. At least as a way of having a relatively even fight. Hey, FFC, you got Mistral today? Okay, cool. People are using Mistrals. Wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. That is good news. What also is good news, at least for Anir, is the fact that Gaiop is just about lost their entire army here and is throwing in the towel. That is game. Realizing they can't really fight back against the force that's closing in on their base. Gaiop, GG's, and that is game. Anir taking it basically just by attrition. I think about... 1,100 metal worth of attrition at that. So well done there to an ear. Anyway, that is going to be... Oh, okay, we're getting... Someone pointing out an example of a game that did have ships played fairly well. Let's see, what is it? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm going to put that in the queue for next week. Although, to be fair, next week... I'm gonna be starting early next week. Just, again, medical appointment. Happens to be... Happens to be at, 11, at an inconvenient time, so we... I will be early, and then ending early next week. But yeah, that'll be a thing. So anyway, that is going to be that. Oh, one last thing. Astro asking in the chat, there's always good reason to switch to air, but a switch to ship only makes sense if there's water. A map flooding device. Okay, so here's the thing about how water works in spring, and this might give you some inspiration. So water in spring is a number. You have a water level, and that is determined by some map configuration stuff. In terms of the engine, water is always at the height coordinate of zero. So what that means as far as the rest of the map, as the rest of what's above and below the water, kind of comes down to map compilation, or map compilation. But what you can do, or what you could theoretically do, it might require some engine changes, would be to have something that allows you to modify what the water plane is over time. I'm not sure if you can do that. The other thing is that because water is fixed at zero and the rest of the land is essentially relative to the water plane, terraforming allows you to create water, which a lot of people do actually. You do see that in some games where people will terraform down to the water level, usually not in a way that allows for making large lakes. Occasionally, but not often. However, if you wanted to have something that did that, what you could theoretically do or propose is something that, I guess, either, like I said, either change the water level or did some kind of mass terraforming. Now, I think mass terraforming has a bit less promise just because the way terraforming works, it 
would at least mess up the art of the game. But if there is a way of on the fly modifying the water level, sure. If there isn't, that's a possible thing to do a pull request on into the engine. I mean, you'd have to be careful because there's probably a lot of assumptions with the maths about water being zero because remember, like multiplying with zero is always zero, adding with zero changes nothing. That creates a lot of assumptions as to what it means for something to be at zero versus any non-zero number. So if it's possible to change the height of all the terrain without doing anything to the art or actually having incurring the terraforming functions, just change the height of the terrain, then yeah, you could have a map flooding device of some kind. But that would be the only thing I can think of. Either change the water level, which might lead to engine bugs, or find a way of shifting all the terrain heights or the terrain min-max such that the terrain moves relative to the water and essentially the terrain sinks. Or the train floats, either way. Oh, Dying Fun pointing out possibility possible issue of pathfinding calculations because you're changing the water level. And yeah, that's a fair point. Because it's hard to tell right now since hovercraft go on water, no problem. But when things are underwater, there's only certain things that can path to. I don't think we can see it right now, since I'm pretty sure commanders can walk everywhere. Yeah, this is Ampbot friendly, so the commanders can easily walk here. But if you're dealing if it wasn't Okay, it's kind of hard to tell that it's red. This is red. It's not purple. Purple is... Like, that's impassable. That's purple over there. This is all passable by bots. But if you were to flood it or not flood it, it would change how pathing works. It's a very good point, Dying Fern. You'd have to recalculate pathing, which is expensive. So that will be, I'd say, the biggest technical hurdle is how to deal with the fact that the levels of shallowness of the water determines pathing. Like, like I said, it's hard to tell because this stuff's amphibious, but stuff that isn't amphibious, I'm pretty sure you can still walk in these shallows and be above water. But then if the water level goes up, well, now those things can't. And if the water level goes down, well, now ships can't go over that. And then it's a problem. Or, like, I think subs first and then surface ships. But, yeah, eventually ships will not be able to go over that because it's no longer underwater. So that has to be recalculated. And then it changes what stuff can go over it. And then stuff down here becomes pathable as the water gets shallower. Or, again, if the water gets deeper, well, now this stuff here has to now recalculate. I mean, everything has to recalculate the pathing. But this stuff here in particular starts becoming impassable to stuff on that's not amphibious. So, yeah, definitely a fair point. Very good thing I didn't think about. A very valid point that I did not think about. Thanks, Dime Friend. Bit of a shame that it does essentially scuttle the entire plan. But, I mean, it's... That's the engineering challenge. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that it is the engineering challenge to work with. I mean, maybe there's some way of storing pathing maps in a way that allows you to interpolate between them, and then it wouldn't be a problem. Anyway, that is going to be that. So thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.